Good evening, everyone. I'd like to call the meeting to order. Uh, members present, uh, Emmanuel Daskalakis, Mike King, Mike Baptiste, Associate Member Richard Swenson, Town Council, Richard Bowen, and myself serving as chair, George Barrett. If anyone's recording this evening, would they make it known? Thank For the you. record, Attorney Sheila Tierney, I'm, uh, I have a court reporter on behalf of my client, Cedar Village, Inc. Thank you. Uh, first order of business is the meeting minutes of September 9th. You had a chance to review, I know they were kind of lengthy. If you'd like, we can put up the minutes till the end of the meeting, or if you're ready to. Ready. September 9th. If everyone's ready, would you care to make a motion? We move that the minutes of September 9th be approved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Next item of business is a uh, approval not required, map 90, lot 1035, Cedar Village, Inc. Oh, I skipped over the first one. Now. Need to set a public hearing date for the proposed subdivision for David Mather on Oak Street. Uh, the date suggested is uh, Monday, October 7th. 27th, 21st. Oh, you've seen it? I'll get it right. Out of time. Yeah, we need to add time. Okay, October 21st. Did you care to make a motion? Motion to accept. Motion to set the public hearing date for 
Definitive subdivision plan for October 21st at 7 o'clock. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion was made by Mike King, seconded by Mike Baptiste, correct? Next, we have the approval not required plan for map 90. Lot 1035, Cedar Village, Inc., 7 and 9, Old Stage Coach Road. did receive a letter from the fire chief. I assume you got a copy. No, I haven't seen it. To the Where I am planning board. On Tuesday, September 10th, 2019, planning board member George Barrett requested a letter of determination from the Wareham Fire Department regarding Old Stagecoach Road and if there was appropriate access for fire department apparatus. <clears throat> It is the Wareham Fire Department's determination that Old Stagecoach Road in its current condition that there is adequate access for one of our emergency vehicles. The Wareham Fire Department can provide emergency services for the current and future residents unimpeded. Respectfully submitted, Matthew Rowley, Chief. Mm -hmm. Anyway, since last we met, uh, there was a site visit by some, along with council, have we any means of any report on that visit that you care to share? <laughs> no, you want to go first? We spent roughly half hour, 40 minutes there, looked over and walked the road. Um, everything looks suitable for traffic. Uh, seems to be a reasonable construction. So based on that, as far as the quality of the road and the access to the homes, I would have to, uh, have to agree with Chief Rowley that it seems to be suitable. The, um, I, I guess the overwhelming question I have is, given the history, is there an easement attached to 1035 that gives them the right to cross the two other properties between them and Galt Road? Which, I'm not clear what you're asking. Is there an easement granted to lot 1035? that gives them the right to access Galt Road from that. You mean to go up Old Stagecoach Road and then onto Galt Road? Correct. Across the Florindo, and you don't have the other property on his name listed here. I don't know what it is. It's Adam Johnson.
Yes, we talked about this the last time, um, that there was a grant of perpetual easement um, from Adam Johnson. And I indicated that it had been recorded with the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds back on May 29th. Does the same exist for the lot uh, 1039A? Uh, well, Lorendo um, property, I guess we'll call it. That's the current home. Yes. Um, and she's admitted to that. Correct? Yeah. I don't know if I have that paperwork with me. Not that it matters if she admitted or the Miss of Lorenzo knows we have the right to pass and repass. But in that easement, it says that others have the right to pass and repass on that road. I mean, same that, like us and same designs it at is the end. My, it's my understanding that when that lot was created, it used Cranberry Highway for frontage. Which lot are you well, talking about? Window property. Um, so 1039A? Yeah. Yes. 1039A. Um. We, we, we don't know why he had to get frontage on Cranberry Highway. I don't know if that's the case. I there's have no a, idea. There's a access right of way out to Cranberry Highway, but that's not the frontage. Right. Which you can't use that access right of way because it crosses a wetland in the and an intermittent stream. And that right away has since been, that piece of property has been purchased by the Apple. Yes. Oh, yeah, they did. But the right of way still exists. Would the uh, council like to weigh in on hey. what you've. Uh, you want to speak? Yeah, is this may, I, may I ask a question? Certainly. or make a comment. Um, I, I also went to the site and uh, saw a wide road paved, uh, and it would be unreasonable to um, claim that vehicles cannot ac ac access whatever property they want using that road. Um, as a member of the planning board and the authority given to us by the statute, I am unclear about certain aspects of this request. Uh, and I'm glad our council is here because I don't understand why this is not a subdivision. Um, th uh, the authority granted to the board is to uh, make certain that no subdivision is, is, is uh, uh, approved unless and until a definitive plan of such subdivision has been submitted to and approved by the planning board. Um, and I've heard very different reasons why this is not or might not be a subdivision, I'm not clear. Um, I see us being faced now with two options. We, A, option one, we deny the a and R endorsement of the plan and require the applicant to submit a definitive plan in accordance with the regulations governing the subdivision of land, or we endorse the a and R plan, fellow colleagues, uh, because the road is wide, has been paved, trees have been removed, i.e. making it passable, uh, and we endorse the plan uh, in, in contradiction, in my view, of our obligation under the rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land. Uh, and what that does in my mind is it's a select, if we approve it, if we endorse the plan, it's selective uh, and I think decreases the, uh, the, the, the authority of the planning board. Why is this not a subdivision? Uh, Mr. Council. <laughs> well, Manuel, thanks a lot. <laughs> well, let's just start from the beginning. Uh, the authority of the planning board extends only as far as the legislature has seen fit to give you authority. So all of your actions are prescribed by the law. Imagine that blank um, uh, screen up there 
is the law. The legislature has acted and said, there it is. That's the law. You can do anything that's inside the boundaries of that screen. Anything that's outside of that isn't in your jurisdiction. So the question here is whether the legislature has given you the authority to uh, judge whether something meets the approval not required standards. The answer to that is yes. Uh, and whether the legislature has given you the authority to require subdivision level examination by the planning board of something that meets those requirements, those A and R requirements. And the answer to that is no. So uh, to answer your question about whether uh, your review of an ANR plan, should you choose to approve it, would be in contradiction to your obligations to the subdivision control law, the answer to that is no. Because if something meets the ANR standards, it does not fall under the subdivision control law. And uh, quite to the contrary of uh, selling out the subdivision control law, if I can put it colloquially, uh, you would be acting in contradiction to your obligations under the approval not required law. So anytime an application comes in front of you, you have to determine <clears throat> what jurisdiction you have over it, what extent of review that jurisdiction gives to you. Um, so what is it in this case? The applicant has approved for an a &R. What the law says is that your ability to review an a and uh, is limited to just certain things. Uh, for example, uh, what sort of way are we looking at? Is it a public way? In this case, no. Uh, so if it's a private way, was the private way in existence prior to the adoption of sub the subcontrol law? And from what I've heard, in this case, the answer is yes. Uh, so, for example, you couldn't just go out uh, today and run a bulldozer through the woods and create a new way and come in and ask for uh, favorable treatment on an a and application on that new bulldozer plowed pathway because that new bulldozer plowed pathway didn't exist prior to the sub subdivision control law. So here you have a private way, yes. Uh, it was in existence before subdivision control. Anybody disagree with that? No. Okay. The next question is, is there sufficient frontage on that private way, on that way? And what's the answer to that question? Yes. 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 Okay. So uh, the private way in existence before subdivision control hurdle is cleared. The frontage hurdle is cleared. That leaves us with the question of access. Is there access to this way? And by access, I don't mean illusory access, you know, just a pencil mark on a plan. Is there real access? What's the answer to that? There is. Those are the three things that you're required to examine. And uh, we're ignoring the, uh, the third requirement of uh, sufficient width the construction of the sufficient width and uh, suitable grades and adequate construction. Uh, in, in what respect are you ignoring that? Well, we don't know how, the, again, I don't mean to be, I, I need to understand how I can execute my obligations here, and this is an incredibly important case. Mm -hmm. I, I mean no ill will to Mr. Escalazi. God bless, God luck, good luck with your project. I just don't feel that I'm sufficiently well informed and as I read the statute or the, uh, the, the uh, authority that's written on our behalf uh, in the rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land, part of what happened takes place under subdivision control. Uh, a, road was, a road which was impassable, which by the way... Uh, uh, if, I, if I may just interrupt. 
I don't like debating with you either. <laughs> no, I, and, and part of what I'm doing is I, I, I tend to use the Socratic method rather than just try to say, That's okay, I'm Greek. There it is. Right. We're Greeks. And as a brother Greek, <laughs> why not? Uh, the factor is access. In what way is this lot inaccessible? It is accessible. But it was made accessible, my question, was it not, the Socratic method, was it not made accessible by virtue of not following the subdivision control regulations? And I use double negatives like you guys do too. <laughs> No question it was cleared, paved. I walked upon it myself, as you know. We walked on it together. For purposes of the ANR, the clearance of the road, the paving of it, is incidental. The road could be, a, well, hypothetically, a way could be approved as being unpaved if emergency vehicles could travel on it. So the paving or lack of paving is an incidental fact. The fact to be reviewed is whether the way grants access. Uh, there's a nice case, Ball versus Planning Board of Leverett, very pretty town, a lot of small ways out there, town next to Amherst out in the western part of the state. The appeals court wrote, uh, wrote out what it is you have to look at. We must determine whether the way is merely deficient, i.e. could be better but manageable, or whether it fails to provide acceptable physical access to the goals of 81M, i.e. access is illusory. So using the appeals court's words, is access illusory? No. All right. It was prior to this clearing and construction. I'm sorry, I don't know what illusory means. Um. Imaginary, a figment, a fiction. Well, not that I want to, well, uh, so prior to the paving, vehicles couldn't pass on it. It was a driveway to a single family, one or two homes down there, I'm not sure. Well, for the record, I believe we introduced a document at the first hearing, at the hearing on the 9th, that showed that prior to um, the paving of Old Stagecoach Road, there is, in fact, a record maintained by the town of Wareham that shows police vehicles and at least EMT vehicles going down this road. So we would contest that uh, access was illusory. Yeah, you know, yeah. I Imagine what you're trying to say is you would contest that it is not illusory. No, that it was illusory prior to the road being paved, which is what Mr. Barrett is just, has just stated. Oh. It's interesting. They had a call last weekend and they couldn't find it. <laughs> you know, you're not doing him any favors because what I was leading towards was that when it was unpaved, access may have been real not illusory. Right, and that's what I'm saying. We've provided documentation that I believe shows that access was real. She misspoke, okay. We heard you. We know, we, we know yeah. what you said, it just didn't come out right. <laughs> okay, so you have evidence in front of you that vehicles <coughs> could get to these one or two houses. So is it one or two? Three. Three. Well, two, um, all the way in. At least two houses possibly three, prior to the paving. Now, this is purely hypothetical because what you have in front of you right now is paved, is it not? Okay, so if it were unpaved, would you consider it illusory access if 
emergency vehicles could get to the two, possibly three, houses that were off of it? It depends, and this is a matter of opinion, and with all due respect, I saw it differently. We walked the road before it was paved, and I believe a large emergency vehicle would be hard pressed to turn some of those curves because of the trees and the narrowness of the road. But that's water over the dam now. Uh, but I, I do not share the view that it was illusory. Uh, in, in fact, for me, it was illusory, yes. Mm. So, uh, perhaps to restate what you just said, if it were in front of you right now, on an unpaved basis as it was, um, you might have been inclined to treat it as illusory, although as it is in front of you today, it's paved. Correct. May I ask a question? Certainly. If it's a private way, how, do, how is, is ownership of the way determined? In, in respect to upgrades? Well, there's an interesting question. You'd want to know who owned the way. And um, as you know probably better than I do, uh, sometimes private ways are treated as a separate parcel. I'm guessing that's not the case here. Uh, I'm guessing that what you have is a private way, uh, that there are notations on deeds, uh, perhaps even easements by prescription where people have been traveling over it, in which case uh, the parties that had frontage along the edge of the way, uh, possibly under the derelict fee statute, would have ownership to the middle of the way, uh, depending on what the deeds themselves said, uh, perhaps the persons who own the underlying fee would have certain uh, obligations. Uh, and then uh, on the question of maintenance, uh, there is a mechanism whereby uh, all the beneficiaries of the way can get together and gather and essentially hold their own private meeting to assess costs for the maintenance of the way. But would, would um, the applicant have taken liberties by improving and paving that road without the input of the folks that have frontage on it? I don't know. As a matter of fact, I don't know what process the applicant followed to get this road paved. The, the reason that I, that I asked the question is while we were there, Speaking with the Florindos, Mrs. Florindo made statement that their property moved off the front of their yard under the road to the other side of the road. So in fact, a, 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 a paved surface has been placed technically on their property. And she, led, she didn't lead me to believe that there was any permissions or even discussions concerning the process with them. It just, it happened. Well, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I, I certainly think that, uh, is Mrs. Florindo here? I don't think, I don't see No, her. okay, so I'm we're. I've, I've talked to her about it. Yes, well, so have I, but, but that's why I would rather have had her here so that she could speak for herself. Uh, it would have been better if Mrs. Florindo were here because, uh, I do recall her saying that she hadn't been asked to um, about whether this way would be paved. Uh, <coughs> I did ask her if she had an objection on that basis, and I think you will recall uh, that she stated that uh, it was her position that people could pass and repass over her property as part of the, the rights in the private way. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm not questioning the ability to pass to get to the other lots. I was just questioning, mm -hmm. you know, where the permissions came to, mm. to, to make improvements upon somebody else's property. And, and I think that we have to separate out the legal issues here. Uh, unless the Florindos, if the, if the Florindos are aggrieved, 
and I didn't get that sense. I mean, they weren't happy that this just happened without a buy your leave. Um, <clears throat> and you correct me if I'm misstating what we both heard. Uh, they weren't pleased about it happening without a, uh, a buy your leave or a request to, to do it. Um, they didn't necessarily seem aggrieved from the point of view of running off to court to get an injunction. No, I didn't get the sense they were going to run off and create legal issues, but they certainly weren't pleased with the fact that it took place without any input from their side. That's true, and I agree with you. Uh, that's what I heard as well. So uh, those facts as pertinent to this analysis probably fall out in this way. Um, the Florindos may or may not have a private right of action uh, against the applicant for overburdening the easement, for coming in and paving without permission. Uh, whether they choose to exercise those rights doesn't matter in terms of what's before you tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, what's before you tonight is simply whether the way as it's been presented to you provides access. Now. If the Florindos had gone to court and got an injunction that prevents the passage of vehicles on it, uh, that would be a different matter. You know, and I'd be saying, well, I really don't see how you could approve it. Okay. Uh, if the Florindos had got that kind of injunction, I think we'd be dealing with a different set of facts here that would go to whether there was access. If a court said, hey, nobody's going across, well, that sounds like no access to me. We don't have those facts. And that's not a potential problem for the applicant down the road once these homes are constructed oh. and sold? Oh, it, it, it may be a real problem <clears throat> for the applicants. So. But for purposes of the planning board, it's not within the factors that are within your purview okay. in reviewing the application. So I guess my, my last question would be if we found favorably on the A&R, and the Florindos go to court and start the process, and as a result, access to these lots becomes now inaccessible. There's nothing that can come back to the board from the homeowners that these have purchased these homes and said, you know, you should have seen this, you should have stopped this, and now we have, we have no way to get to our homes because of us. Uh, I'd have to say that would be a pretty weak claim. Uh, if you choose to approve this application, the only thing that you're saying is that it has frontage, it was a private way in existence before subdivision control, and that there were enough facts to show that there was access. That's all you're saying. Okay. You're not saying uh, these lots will be great. You're not saying that they'll be buildable uh, because approval of an ANR, that doesn't mean anything's buildable. Uh, you're not saying that they comply with zoning. Uh, you're not warranting this property at all. And if there are legal impediments to the end user using this roadway, you've pointed them out, uh, but that's going to be on the applicant to cure. Okay. Thank you. If I may, um, Emmanuel, uh, did we answer your question I don't think that you've gotten the answer that you wanted and, and well it's not a matter of getting the answer I want it's trying to understand uh, uh, may I rephrase that you didn't get an answer to your question period uh, not clear and if I may for the last time and I won't take any more of your time um, the situation shall not be deemed to constitute a subdivision if there are those items that you mentioned or a way in existence or and a way in existence when the subdivision control law became effective was having in the opinion of the planning board sufficient width it didn't suitable grades not an adequate construction unknown okay now this has been corrected but quote unquote by what process and all, and perhaps we shouldn't take their time, perhaps you need to come to the board and help, help us understand our obligations here because 
I do not understand how the process of correcting the insufficient width, the un unsuitable grades, and the unknown construction, how do they come to be corrected? By what, by what process? And does the planning board have any involvement in it? As I understand it, and I will shut up, it, it's, it's hard to do. Uh, <laughs> it, as I understand it, it, it's what is given to us under the authority of the um, rules and regulations governing the subdivision of land. Thank you for listening, and I'm, I, I still need an answer sometime. Okay. Well, uh, with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll try to answer your question. Uh, the subdivision rules do not apply to this. Uh, the process uh, that you wish to understand by which these improvements were made certainly is a matter of some interest. And were I to be a prospective purchaser of one of these lots, I certainly would be interested in it. And by the way, I'm not. But uh, just as a matter of caution, I would be interested in that. But that isn't what is in front of this board right now. Uh, and while your curiosity about those factors is commendable and understandable, um, you must think of it in these terms. Were this board to turn down the ANR, and you can do as you please, I won't make a recommendation and I certainly don't have a vote, you must ask yourself uh, if in a year or two when it's the day of trial and one or both counsel have made a motion for a view of the property uh, of the roadway and we, the judge, the clerk, the jury if there is a jury, um, yourselves as witnesses, the applicant, when we're all standing out in the middle of the roadway and the judge asks, sir, is there frontage? Your answer will be yes. Was this a private way in existence when the subdivision control rules were adopted? Your answer is yes. Can I have a fire truck come down this lane? as we stand on it here today? Well, Chief Rowley says yes. That's all the judge is going to ask. And so, how do you think that trial will end? It will have been very expensive for both parties. I work on retainer, so <laughs> no. So uh, if I may, um, Mr. Bowen, I just want to be very clear that I understand this. The point that you're making is, is that there is no question about does, do subdivision laws apply or not apply. The point, the question in front of us is, is this A&R application um, does it meet the requirements and that is all we are to vote on or decide upon? Does this A&R meet the requirements of an A&R according to our bylaws? According to state law. And you're right, that is the only question. Oh, and normally this, the protection of that would be whether it met the zoning would be whether we got a building permit or not. Uh, it's already no, received nope. a building permit. No, no, well, no, 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 no has nothing to do not what we're with doing, zoning. But what we're doing, we're not saying it's buildable or not. Oh, you, uh, Mr. Chairman, forgive that, me, you are quite right. That determination would be made by the building department In, after this process. Uh, before. Mr. Chairman, you're 100% right. You're not saying it's zoned properly. You're not saying it's buildable. You're not saying it can connect to sewer. You're not saying it'll get a septic tank. You're not saying it has water. All you're saying is that it meets those three characteristics that I've described and nothing more. Currently, this road is not town maintained, not town accepted. 
It's maintained by agreement with two of the abutters. Now you're adding two more, possibly four more abutters. If there's any attempt for that road to be accepted down the line, the cost will be, they'll bear the burden of that. Nothing to do with the ANR. Oh, and Mr. Chairman, if I may, just to add on to your point, because uh, this was something that, uh, a concern that the Florindos had raised when we spoke with them. You know, what happens in the future? You know, what if somebody wants to make it a public way? The board knows the process very well. I know this, and perhaps this is just more for anyone who happens to be listening in. Um, persons who wish to make it into a public way would have to petition the Board of Selectmen. They would open a layout hearing. They would send a referral to the planning board for its recommendation. If the recommendation from the planning board came back as favorable, then the Board of Selectmen, in their discretion, would decide whether to lay out the roadway. And then if they decided to lay it out, then it would go to town meeting where the voters of the town would decide whether the town wanted to take it on. And I don't wish to anticipate something that you might do in future, but um, I've certainly seen the planning board take a keen interest in the quality of the road before it's been willing to accept something as a, recommend something to be accepted as a public way. I mean, Emmanuel, at that point, certainly the, the quality of the construction is absolutely fair game and the recommendation you'd make to the selectmen. It's just that's not what we have today. And I'm going on, I guess. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. You'll be glad to see the backside of me when I leave. Look, I know this has been a controversial thing. I've certainly heard a lot about it. Um, people's expectations of what is expected from this board could be unrealistic. You know, the factors that you're reviewing are very limited. If there are other issues that people have about this proposal, then they should address those concerns to the boards or state officials or whomever that have jurisdiction to review those particular concerns. And it would be unfair for this board to be freighted with the expectation of having to deal with things that might be the subject of oh, a certain st state agency review or uh, other departments. <clears throat> Does this establish the layout of Old Stagecoach Road? No. Because an aerial photo I saw, not 10 years old, shows it coming to the corner of the Florindo property and then heading south. So we're going to see ANIs next week for another Old Stagecoach Road? <laughs> That sounds illusory. <laughs> this was more illusory than that. At least that's identified on a map. Charlie, did you have a comment? Um, I have a dilemma. <laughs> uh, and that is, how do you draw the distinction between a simple road which has been there since time immemorial having certain conditions uh, of construction connected with it, whereby you could very simply come in and, or you could make the determination by going out there on the ground and seeing um, the construction. How, how does the board going forward make the distinction between that situation and this one, which um, has seen these improvements only occur in the last two months. It would seem to me that the, one of the opening sections of our own subdivision rules and regulations say that uh, you can't do road construction without approval under the subdivision control law. It's also one of the things in the definition of what a subdivision is not when it calls for the planning board to make a determination as to the adequacy of construction. 
when you go out there and uh, anybody sees that road, you're going to be seeing it from the surface. And I'm not trying to cast any dispersions on the applicant or the construction methods because, quite frankly, I don't know what they are. I wasn't out there when the work was done. I was out there once when the road was completely paved, the way that you see it today, but not during the course of construction. So where does the line get drawn between those instances where you clearly have a road that doesn't fit the third of the three options that a planning board has, and a situation where one just goes in and arbitrarily makes improvements to his own standards and then comes in and asks the planning board to endorse that plan or an ANR. Well, you've, it's an interesting question, but the problem with the question is that you've posed a false assumption and then built a question upon the false assumption. Right. The please, please enlighten me on the false assumption because I need to understand this. <laughs> yeah, I know. The false assumption is that the subdivision rules and regulations apply to this application. They don't. It's a private way that was in existence prior to the adoption of subdivision control. But the, I do not make the assumption that it did not exist. What I'm saying is that without any input from the planning board or um, making an attempt to ask for waivers for construction, construction was done on a road, and then after the fact, the ANR application is applied for. How does anyone, whether it's this applicant or any applicant, uh, get to be able to do that under the terms of the subdivision control law or the ANR statute? Uh, Stop. How does anyone get to do this under the sub subdivision control law? Or the ANR statute, because that, that well, presumes that you can just go out and do it on your own, doesn't it? Yes. And if you can do that on your own, why are we all here? Because there's an application in front of the Board of Appeals, which, uh, pardon me, Board of Appeals, the Planning Board, which asks for the Planning Board's determination as to whether there is sufficient frontage on a private way that was existence before the subdivision control law was in existence, on a private way that has real rather than illusory access. That is why we are here. What in, if I may, Mr. Chairman, what in your opinion might the planning board do to improve its subdivision rules and regulations so that this doesn't happen again? This is not a subdivision. You cannot apply subdivision rules and regulations to something that isn't a subdivision. Legally, this is not a subdivision. And then <laughs> Charlie, if I may, uh, your, your question. I've, I've, your, I've, I've stated I'm, my, my case, and I'll, I'll rest there. It's not fair for me to take up any more of your time. No, but I think your point, your point is valid, but I don't think it applies right now. I think it, that uh, when, when, that, this, when this yeah, is done, right. When this is done, then I will ask you to repeat that question and we can talk about it. But in terms of... I hear what you're saying. In, in terms of addressing the applicant's application for an A&R, this isn't the right time. Any other questions, concerns? The point of order, uh, uh, with Mark not here tonight, mm -hmm. George, uh, typically I don't vote, but I think that on this issue, being here for all of the hearings, I think I may, I may, but I'm, no. not, I'm not sure. I, I don't believe so. This is not a hearing. This is not a hearing. For okay. One, but I don't think you act on any of that. It's not a, speci not a special permit either, and I think that's the only case where... Uh, Do you want to be clear? Remember, you can't. Looks like you're out of luck, bud. Yeah. <laughs>
Uh, I had a question why uh, note two on the plan references was there regarding Beaver Path. Is that somewhere on this plan? Or? It's just an abutting property, hmm? which goes towards property line determinations. So we've got a fair amount of survey in the area. Uh, it's an abutting piece of land. We built upon the survey from that to establish these property lines. Um, we've used some of Mr. Rowley's plans going back earlier on this property. Anything? Question? Well, it's, it's a shame that I was on the assumption that we had a certain shot at the way the planning board ran. This here is totally circumventing the whole system. So we're coming from the back door and we have to accept it. I don't agree with you, Council. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, you, you should not take this as, and, and I certainly hope that you don't mean it in a disparaging way. I am reciting to you the law of the Commonwealth as it has been handed down to you by the legislature and by the courts of the Commonwealth. I don't have to like it. I didn't write it. I didn't design it. It doesn't matter whether I agree with it or whether I don't. But this is the law. The law allows what the law allows. And it's not your job to like it. It's your job to follow it. Any comments, motions, observations? <laughs> We need to make a motion to call for a vote. We do. <laughs> I'm not doing it. <laughs> Can I make a motion then that we uh, have a vote on this applicant's application for an A and R? Can't make a motion. Uh, that's an interesting point. He's not voting on the project he's voting on an action so oh you've told me before I can make motions and I have. <laughs> I'm not ready to vote. I received a lot of information that is contrary to my instinct and my understanding of the law, and I'm not a lawyer. But I don't know what the consequence of my statement is. I'm just not ready to vote. Unfortunately, some sort of decision will have to be made tonight and filed tomorrow. So. Uh So here we go looking what a gun to our head, right? Hmm. Well, you'd have a very short time period for ANS. Uh, I was I was under the impression that we that the decision that our time ran out tonight to decide mm -hmm. on this. Correct. Yes, Mr. Chairman. If you choo if the board chooses to do nothing, uh, the application is constructively endorsed. That ain't gonna happen. So <clears throat> well we can make a motion to deny. We'll go back to square one. No, you'll go to court. Well, maybe that's where we we'll have to go. Because I don't agree with you, counsel. I really don't. Because this whole plan from day one is a backdoor. It's a backdoor system. So the Commonwealth allows backdoor. What are we here for? I'll be sure to call you as my first witness. Judge? Michael, Michael, on the other hand, with great regret, we have our counsel advising us, and that's well, what's... There's always two lawyers and there's a judge. And if, if you don't have to agree with them every time. I don't agree with them this time, I really don't. 
You guys got to do me a favor by using the mic. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> I don't agree, Bob. Is that Bob? <laughs> got to turn him on, too, Mike. Sorry about that. Oh, is, is that better? Uh, Pay no attention to the voice behind the curtain. <laughs> <laughs> back, up. back up, George. I, I did make a motion, and uh, you had question as to whether I was allowed to or not. So I would, I would ask for help from council on that one. Well, There's why that. don't I withdraw it? I'll withdraw <laughs> that motion. And we'll let you four take care of it then. <laughs> Is there, uh, instead of waiting two years and making the lawyers rich? I work on a retainer. <laughs> so I'm making a lawyer rich. Um, <laughs> Um, would it be at all possible to shortcut the process by submitting a definitive plan to go for subdivision quickly no, with it, waivers? No, it, it's our position that we're not under the subdivision well, I, I rules understand, and regulations. And we have, um, I believe I indicated that we already have a prospective buyer uh, for the um, home that's been constructed, um, and my client would end up, you know, sustaining damages uh, by any further delay. So when we were here on the 9th, you specifically asked if we would agree to give you additional time because you wanted to get the input of the fire chief, which you now have received, and you also wanted to go and you wanted to inspect the road, which you've indicated that you have. So we would respectfully request that you take a vote on our proposal tonight. Uh, if we take a vote and it is negative, it doesn't help your client and it doesn't help the board, it doesn't help the town. Um, we appreciate having had the time to become familiar, more familiar with the situation. And still there remains this question, which with all due respect to Mr. Bowen, has done a beautiful job of explaining it. But, uh, and, and it's with all due respect, I'm not disagreeing uh, uh, academically with you. It's just, I feel that the process for improving this road should have been followed in a different manner. And so if we deny the application tonight, we're going to be in court for two years. And that doesn't help you either. And I, I hope you understand that our, we, we have the same commitment here to doing the right thing as you do when you sit at the Zoning Board of Appeals. We all, we're all doing the same thing. Uh, could we not find an intermediate method to get your goals accomplished and to get the board to perform in accordance with what it believes to be its obligation? Respectfully, I would indicate to you that your responsibility as a board member is not to follow your feelings, but to follow the law. And I think your counsel has made it very clear what the law is. He cited the same case that I cited to all of you on September 9th. Um, we believe under the law of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that my client is entitled to endorsement on this ANR plan. And that's what we're asking for. And I ask you again, sorry for the time. By what mechanism that is within the purview of the planning board, which the authority grants us, by what mechanism has the insufficient width, insufficient grades, and unknown construction been addressed? By what mechanism? Subject to the, under the board's purview. I mean, th there's the conflict, you see. We, part of our authority, no person shall make a subdivision 
unless and until a definitive plan of such subdivision has been submitted to and approved by the Wareham Planning Board. This is, in, not, in this is not a subdivision, respectfully. But the process, the process of, of improving the road. This is not a subdivision. Okay. I, guess, I guess my, my question to council would be, what I've read on the subject was, as long as the improvements were made prior to the application, they were to be considered. I don't know if that's accurate or not. I'm sure you've read a lot more of that than I have. Uh, with your permission, I don't know that that's accurate either. Uh, you're going to be, you're judging this as it sits on the ground right now. Mm -hmm. And look, I, what I'm about to say, I, I say it with uh, great respect for Emmanuel and for Mike. Uh, believe me, it, 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 it's never a comfortable position to be delivering harsh truths. Uh, and I hope you understand that, and that my delivering harsh truths, I don't do it with disrespect for those of you who disagree with what I'm telling you. But I must also tell you this, that it is your job to follow the law as it is given to you. It is not your job to legislate and create law that does not exist. If I may. And so you must ask yourselves, are you acting as legislators here, which is not your job, <laughs> or are you carrying out the law as it is written and given to you? If, if I may, one Thank last you. comment. So, so you've explained to us quite clearly, you know, access, frontage. If there's no document or no agreement with the Florindo stating that they could improve the property which belongs to them, isn't he in fact gaining access through suspect terms? I mean, that's, that's part of this whole uh, agreement is he has access, that this is what we're debating tonight. Yes, he has access. But does he have access under 100% legal terms? Or has he taken liberties with someone else's property and improved upon that property in order to, to accommodate this question of access? With your permission, Mr. Chairman. You know, in fairness, that's probably a question that the applicant should be answering to the board. But I will just say this. When I and you and Emmanuel spoke to Mrs. Florindo about their right to pass and repass. Her answer was? True. I'm not, not they may questioning do so. the right they to may pass. Do so. I'm questioning the right to improve the road in order to gain an a and our approval. And for the record, I don't know whether you spoke to Mr. Florindo or not, but we did. Um, my Mr. Florindo gave my client permission to do that and requested in exchange that my client pave his driveway, which is what, and also um, uh, mulch the yard, apparently. Discuss this enough. <laughs> so with that, I would ask for a motion to endorse the Form A and R for Lot 1035A and 1035B. I think if that motion is going to be made, it's going to have to come from you. <laughs> I I will vote to support it. I'm going to hold my nose doing it, but I will vote to support it, but I am not going to be on record as making the motion to approve it. I will make the motion to endorse the A and R for lot 1035A and 1035B, map 90. Second. Is 
say I don't think anybody likes the feel of this. I think there was other access provided by the previous owner that would have been better suited, but this is what we have before us. And it does meet the area and frontage. With great regret, I vote to endorse. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. So moved. Sip to my stomach. Thank you. Thank you. Bag yeah, really. It's getting a little warm in here. Can yeah. I turn that back on? Yeah. I like to have a discussion with you sometime about why it didn't take it out of that realm and throw it into a subdivision by the virtue of the construction. Yeah. Seems to me that it it did away with that. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes we can work with a hand with that issue. How do we change it? That's not right. This wouldn't be the last one. <laughs> juncture there's there's no set of standards that you could apply to anything doesn't seem the way Some suggested uh, bylaw changes you can make to keep this stuff from happening. I get this all the time. Uh, next, we have off my Christmas list. <laughs> Oh, you don't want to stay? No. <laughs> you got more of this in store? <laughs> oh, that's true enough. Thank you. You don't have to agree all the time. Thanks for coming in, Mitch. We appreciate it. <laughs> we could have made it a lot worse for you. <laughs> Let's see. Lot 
A and B for Longwood Ave, care of JC Engineering. Put your mic back on so we don't get yelled at. <laughs> hey, Bob, can you hear me? <laughs> Bob, did you hear me swearing? Very good. The floor is yours. <laughs> sure. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Brian Wallace with JC Engineering. Uh, in front of you is an ANR plan uh, which depicts um, two existing dwellings, uh, one built in 1940, one built in 1910 per the Wareham Assessor's card, uh, built on one lot. Do you have a copy of the cards? Copy of the card? Yes, I do. I believe I may have submitted, but I also... Frontage records 50 feet. Mm -hmm. So, um, both of these uh, dwellings were existing prior to the um, subdivision control law. Uh, this plan uh, divides the lot um, currently divided in lot 544A, 544B. Uh, we're proposing reconfiguration of those two laws to provide uh, one single dwelling on each, um, and that is essentially what this plan is. Yeah, I don't know what that's like. Yeah, yeah. And the houses already exist. Yeah, the two houses exist. Yeah. So are they just they're providing access? Yeah, so many. So many. Their access is still here. Longwood Avenue. Yeah, well, where's this brick walk? Really? Does it lead to water? Since Attorney uh, Owen left, I'll just go over the exemption that, that applies to this particular case. He's, I'm sure he's in the back of it. <laughs> this is called an 81L exemption. It's the division of attractive land on which two or more buildings were standing when the subdivision control law went into effect in the city or town in which the land lies into separate lots on each of which one such of buildings shall remain standing, shall not constitute a subdivision. <clears throat> Now the rear lot line was changed at some point? Uh, the lot dividing 544A and 544B? Yeah. Yeah, so that was all um, one, one deed um, that described both lots. So um, I'm unsure of how long that's been established for. It was unclear looking through the, uh, the records, but yeah. So this is the fire district, yes, these two. So at some point, the owner of lot 544 A and B purchased the property in the back, in, in the rear? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, yeah, they, they bought the property as one. Yep. So they just moved that down to give them basically their... So under the old configuration, this would uh, the patio on their property. Yeah. Or maybe the quarter months since. We, I'm, 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 we don't uh, find one would have to be sufficient with the gray. Yeah. <laughs> need both. That's okay, they can fix it anyway, so for later on. I'll just cut the intro. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. How can you go against the ear? <clears throat> Twelve hundred square feet in one, and two thousand eighty-two in the other. The buildings. The, the lots. Oh, the lots. Sorry. The lots. Two thousand square feet. Yeah. The 
the line card shows the been there that long. Yep, nineteen forty. Uh, you care to make a motion? Entertain a motion to endorse uh for me for <coughs> William Michael Butler. Uh, for you, for Longwood Ave, answer. Approval not required. Plan. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? What's the first two, sir? This one will fold. Hmm? This one will fold. <laughs> need this back. Uh, you can hold on to it. I don't need it. She TV'd a whole lot of cash shows. Feed them ice cream and turn on barrack Next jacks. Next is an approval not required plan for an ANR for map 105, lot 16, 17, 1010, map 106, lot 2, Charlotte Furnace Road, AD Make Peace Care of GAF Engineering. Thank you, sir. Approved. <laughs> why, why can't they all beat the season? <laughs> Thank you. I'm Bill Madden from GAF Engineering here on behalf of ED Makepeace. We have a less complicated, um, the least complicated Form 8 plan that you've seen tonight. Um, <laughs> well, but it, it's less complicated. Um, but um, ED Makepeace is just seeking to divide some of the property that they own. They, they had two lots. Um, I guess it was lot numbers 16 and 17. They're shown as a dotted line there adjacent to the, uh, to the easement. Adjacent to that lot for the duration of time that the people um, that live in that home are there. So there's a note on the plan accordingly. I know it's a little bit more. We, Richard Serkey had us add 
the general or the restriction note that's uh, in the center of the sheet. But uh, as far as the form eight goes, they all meet the uh, frontage and area requirement. So that 50 foot swaths can come all the way to South Prince Road, Bill? I notice you've got, you got, a, you got a, a radius in there. <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm kind of kind of antsy sometimes when we see different lines on the print, so. Yeah. Just, okay. But just right here? Yeah. Just the whole hockey puck they're going to restrict, right? Correct. Okay. In the remaining land of L2, approximately it's about 289 acres. That's the remaining land of L2. So was that 50 foot restriction granted to that particular owner or does it run with the property? It does not run with the property. It's solely for the benefit of the owner of that lot while they're, while they're living. What on lot two now? L2? Yep. yep. What's going to happen there? I believe it's just to remain as I'm sure they're going to break up or do conduct other activities within that lot over time. As of now, there is no plan um, for that lot, but I think that there's, if you look at L2 previously behind, say, where Master Millworks is and further down Charlotte Furnace Road, there's some solar sites that were, that were built on that. I, I don't know whether that land was conveyed out or leased to the solar company or what the situation was there, but there are no plans um, at the present time for the remaining portion of L2. These are also within the BDOT? Yes. Can I make a motion? Certainly. I move to endorse the plan uh, labeled. Is there three? a second? Yes, a second. <laughs> second. Motion made by Emmanuel, you, seconded Bill. by Mike King. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? You got the papers? Continued public hearings, so public hearings. And next we have is a discussion from on Factory 5 Racing regarding a modification of the special permit. You again. You again, <laughs> Bill Madden from GA up here on behalf of Factory 5. Thank you.
Um, with respect to Factory 5, um, we dropped off some revised plans to Ken. I think um, if, you might, if you recall back when the project was run through site plan review, there were, um, there were some conditions on the conditions of approval. Um, and the most significant one was that we had to work with the neighbor um, with respect to some of the material that he had stockpiled on on the property uh, that factory factory five was acquiring we we went through a few dis well I didn't run through a few discussions with them but the uh, the pro project manager from factory five went through uh, some discussions with them and needless to say there was a little bit of a difficult time with some discussions and we had to make a well it was suggested that we make a modification to the drainage to offset some of the uh, some of the discussion points that the abutter was making and um, they weren't really able to come to a perfect agreement with uh, with what the disposition would be of the stockpiled material that was on the site you might recall several other minor changes that came about, like relocating some landscaping, changing a slope here or there. So we just made a complete plan set change and submitted them to the planning board for, for review. But you might recall in this area in the back, there was a lot of stockpiles and they were all overgrown with material on the back side of the property. One point ten, we had shown a stone wall on the, on the back side there. And uh, we took that off, it was a condition of approval number four, I think it was number four, that required us to meet with the, the owner of that material to see what we could do to uh, pull it back and redesign, regrade the site the way we had originally proposed. Well, he pulled his material back and now it's, it is on the property line, but it's probably the boulders and the rocks that are piled up there, they're probably taller than what the proposed building is going to be. So it's really not a great situation to be um, digging another drainage basin next to that. So what we propose to do is fill it in. But I'll get to that in a minute. But this, this area here on sheet number three just shows what the existing topo is on the site after all the material was moved. So what we did find is there was a, there was some, there was a drainage manhole that was covered um, with, with those rocks. There was a couple of leaching pits that were covered with the lots. And they were predominantly for a parking lot that was associated with the bakery that was there. So since we're tearing down the bakery and we're providing a new drainage system, there really isn't a need to maintain that system. But where the catch basin existed off-site and unknown as to what area that we're draining, what, what is actually draining into that basin. We left one of the, we're calling to leave one of the leaching pits there just abandon the pipe feed so that in the event any water does get to the basin. I don't think anything gets there because that adjacent property is on a, on a yard that has a lot of uh, vehicles, debris and things of that nature. There's no direct grading that goes to that catch basin. But in any event, the, we had no business dealing with the catch basin, so it was to remain. The leaching pit was on the property line, so we just decided to leave that there, cap the overflow pipe out of it, and let it, just leave it to remain as it is for drainage. It doesn't interfere with the project. That's just a grading plan that doesn't really, doesn't really change uh, with what we're doing. Here's the, uh, the meat of the, of the project change. Originally, the basin had a small finger-like projection that stuck. It projected on the back side of the parking lot. Um, all of our drainage went to the 
that stormwater chart that was uh, located basically at the deeper end of the, the larger end of the drainage basin. So what we did is we, we showed that being uh, filled in with three 24 inch diameter um, corrugated plastic pipes in, in a stone bed. That was to compensate for the volume of the open basin that we, uh, that we were filling in. So I provided Ken with some drainage calculations that shows what the volume of the basin, that portion of the basin was that we're filling in and what we're providing for mitigation for that. So essentially we'll have a, a flat area now adjacent to this parking uh, in vehicle delivery area adjacent to that. And we, and as opposed to having, I think we had three to one slope design there. We show it as being, I think we're showing it as a, a two to one, I'm sorry, a one to one. But it's um, we're going to stone it, use trap rock or stone for pipe ends on that on that section um, where there's a lot of rock behind us. You know, we didn't think that aesthetically it would be too much of a problem. We know it will hold the bank. It will hold the bank again um, on our on our side of the property. And it looks like it's about um, 60 feet or so of stone and a little bit more over here on, on another one of those piles. Or those debris piles. So that's really the focus of the change that we have on the uh, on the plan. There's uh, talk about the talk about the stone fill um, on note number five, and then our landscaping plan required us to move a little of the landscaping around in the space. And we didn't eliminate it; we just shifted it um, a little bit further down to the really going to be anything on that on that stone slope uh, but we did you know, just ship that material down in that in that drainage basin the underground infiltration that we're proposing, how it's to be constructed, how it's to go in place, what have you. We show what we did to the infiltration basin just with the, the elevations of the 100 year of the storm events changed by fractions of a fractions of a foot, you know, not very much at all. But we decided to put that on the plan, at least updated in, in that regard. So really it's a it's filling in that open piece of basin with with a pipe and an infiltration bed that's below grade. And that was really the only thing that we could come up with to, uh, to solve the problem with the, with the neighbor. So what we did is we sent a, le a letter to the planning board and we um, provided the information because condition number four of their special permit gives the planning board the authority to make what might be considered minor changes. We're thinking that these could be consider, uh, considered minor changes and uh, could be approved without the need of a public hearing. So that's the whole focus is to come before you just to discuss what we're doing here and uh, wait, have you weigh in on whether or not you agree that they're minor or whether you may consider these significant. to review these or I'm seeing them for the first time George all right I think the only question I would have would be um, on the drainage calculations I was just looking through this set to see if there was a um, a plan that tells me where the various sub catchments are um, I'm trying to relate that diagram to the sub catchments and I'm not sure where they are Oh, I think that the sub catchments would be the, you know, I'd have to provide you with the original drainage calc because none of the catchment areas changed. 
Oh, it's so it's the same uh, designation? Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, from my perspective, I think just a quick uh, overview of the drainage calcs is all I need to do. Uh, there hasn't been enough difference in the overall design of it to warrant going into detail on the plan. So you, 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 you probably feel the way we feel if consider it a minor change? I do. Does the uh, final resting place of this construction debris, does that cause water to run under this property? <laughs> no. Bill, I got a question. On the uh, left hand, lower left hand corner, you're going to waste a red maple tree if the canopy's over them stones, it might create a problem. Oh, you mean in the in the corner, the one that we're going to plant, right? The one that's going to be planted right here. Not that one. The other one. This one over here. Yeah. That canopy looks like it's over the line. I think you might have a problem there. <laughs> well, we may, but we're not. We're hoping that we're hoping that we won't. George. Oh, it's just a real difficult situation. Well, I, and I, I know that. I said I'm saying that candidly because I, I know the uh, the uh, butter. And he definitely can be a difficult individual. Yeah. Unreasonable. No, and I mean, it's a, it's a good project. And, you know, we're not making any noise about what's going on over there or whatever. But, you know, I'm sure that when certain inspections get made, I'm, you know, other things might come about. Shall he have to wear a flak jacket? <laughs> just, just an observation, Mike. Would it make sense to take that maple and put it out front? Yeah, I, I would. I would rather would, than have it back there, and yeah. then, because it's only going to get choked out back there. Why waste a good tree? If um, if that's your wish, if we review the plan, and that's a that's a comment that you make, we're happy to comply. Yeah. You've got that sort of a uh, some sort of a circle there that I'm assuming is going to be grassed in or something. See where that sort of a loop of the curbing is in there, uh, Bill? Here. Yeah. Somewhere in there? Sure. Could that be incorporated in there somehow? Yeah, I don't see why not. It looks like that might be one of the few areas that's um, a little sparse to the landscape. You know, there's a couple of utilities in there, but I don't think there's anything that would, uh, a, a tree would just, so sure, we could, we could put it right over here. Just a suggestion, that's all. Yeah. They tend to kill whatever's underneath them. <laughs> Well, the thing, the thing is that rock pile so high with all that overgrowth, that tree's never going to survive in the back. Plus, red maple trees are pretty. I like them. Uh, so, I think we look for a, a motion to approve as a minor modification. Subject, oh. to, subject to, to the review. Engineering review. Yep, yeah, that's my motion. Second. Motions made by Mike Baptiste, seconded by Emmanuel. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll, I'll have the review done so that you can have it as a part of your next meeting. So I don't know what Ken's schedule is for doing the document up. You'll have to sign, but I'll be prepared to give you a favorable report, I suspect. That will work just fine. We are a reasonable board. I know. <laughs> I've, been, I've been coming by here, stopping by occasionally for a number of years. I, I don't have any issues with um, with anything. I get the smell. That was Don McKinley's favorite comment. Remember that? Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Good night. And if you need any more from me, I'll just, whatever you need, just give us a I'll call. call. Yeah, we'll help. Yeah. We'll do whatever's necessary. Okay. Thanks very much. You want your, hey, Bill. You want your request, Bill? You want this? Thank you, Bill. Um, Thank you. Bay Point Drive, endorsement of Phase 2 subdivision plan with cover. I, I think you may have the uh, a draft of the covenant in your folders. Is this what we were waiting for? Regarding this is what we were waiting for, and we uh, just received it.
Can I ask a question, please, the, Mr. I'm sorry. Can Can you explain to me what what, what this is? I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm only learning so fast. <laughs> This, this is a document that says the improvements will be made in accordance with the subdivision plans before the, any transfer of the property. As in them selling? And as in them selling. Okay. The Me Too movement hasn't gotten a hold of this yet. No. Uh, no, all men and women. They already know. <laughs> Oh, is my mic on? Wait a minute. If I hide this, it doesn't count. <laughs> References to the nameplate. <laughs> You identify. Hmm? I'm in here. That's a lot of double time. <laughs> Do release lots individually? Yeah. I thought that was, we were told you couldn't do that. Not a good Something idea at all. Is that? You may do it, but it's not a good idea. You must idea. have a mortgage on, on the property. Well, that's, it says you can do that, right? Yeah. I thought that that was... You want to strike it? Oh, I 
think it would save us a lot. I, I don't, I didn't know that that stood up. I thought once you released the covenant, you either replaced it with a performance bond or surety. A, a different form of surety. <coughs> or you, you couldn't hold smaller lots. Lesser lots, I guess. Let's, let's cross Lesser that amount. out. Let's cross that out then. Good exposure to that, Charlie. I, I What's know that, George? That in the past, we'd released individual lots, but somewhere along the line, I was told that that's not a good idea, that if you replace, rather than release single lots, you replace the covenant with a different form of surety. So you, cannot, you cannot um, release, make a partial release, let me say it that way, of some lots and not release others without some other form of surety because that's not one of the four criteria that's allowed under the rules of regulations. You can do it as a combination, but you can't simply say that, well, we've withheld five out of the ten lots so we've still got security on those first five. You got nothing on those first five. So, if you're going to re if you want a partial release of those lots and the construction has not been finished, then you get security on those on those lots. I get you. Is this fighting this still enough? Is this typical, this document? This covenant, yes, it is. I'm, I'm assuming so. I haven't seen it. <laughs> oh. Um. Yeah. There's, there's upon performance of this covenant with respect to any lot. So, the action. So, if there's enough surety there, you can release. Right. Yeah, if, if they want lot releases, once this covenant's put on record, then they've got to supply the cost estimate for the construction just like they did in phase one. <clears throat> there are blanks in terms of dates and uh, other documents. What, what, we, don't, we don't sign blanks, do we? No, we don't. We fill those in. So what are we doing tonight? Just reading this? Just okaying it for uh, uh, future endorsement. Because we'll have to have the uh, plans themselves as well. Sorry. The, the plan of land, of the subdivision of land, has to be part of, is, is a partner with this covenant. And you, and you endorse those subdivisions. Council plans. reviewed this? No, not yet. Give it a tool while he was here. I'm sure we'll get it soon. Does this make any sense to you? Only if it was the original one. I have to go back to the book page reference, title references to see which one it is. I can't even find it on here now. We didn't finish the approval of phase two, did we? What's that? We didn't complete the approval of phase two? Yeah, you did. The soil plan was all done? Yeah. Could have been in 2018. That's the date they quoted. <laughs> um, no, no. No, they were here this past spring. So th that's taken out of the rules and regulations, Form F. Yes. 
Were, were there any special conditions mentioned in there, George? Not, not conditions as to uh, construction and so forth. This is uh, this, uh, it references our approval, which would have. Okay, and the certificate of approval and the conditions that are attached to that? Correct. Yeah, okay. These in here, it's more the execution of the covenant than anything else. Yep. Just a review. If there's anything glaring that. It's not necessary to include. But I'll have uh, the council review it, confirm that it's the same. I'll have council, town council review it and get the, uh, the plans for endorsement along with the uh, covenant. Can you tell us about Cahoon Drive reconfiguration? Speaking of Bay Point, um, Tim Fay came came to my office with a suggestion that, <clears throat> that the uh, we allow him to put a turnaround at the end of the public section, the developed public section of Cahoon Drive, and link. Bay Point Drive extension, call the existing Cahoon Drive section within his, his uh, golf course subdivision. Bay Point Drive, call it Bay Point Drive and have the Bay Point Drive extension and Bay Point Drive be one, one continuous road with Cahoon Drive separated. What's they going to do with everybody in the condos up there? So they'll be on Bay Point Drive? They'd be on Bay Point Drive instead of Bay Point Drive extension. And you would then connect to the other end of it, like originally was proposed? Correct. With emergency access in between. So, so this section from onset out all the way up to the end of the... Uh, There's supposed to be a cul-de-sac up there now, right, by the corner. Where are going to put the... Isn't there supposed to be a breakaway gate there years ago? Yeah. Never I got put up? so. We're supposed to come all the way around and, the pond. And so you can't and go up here and right. down here? Yeah, you couldn't go up Cahoon Drive from onset and connect unless you're an emergency vehicle. How do you control that? Gates. Same thing done at the other end of... Uh, long that's a town way, though. Mm -hmm. Right, and a neat town meeting action. Yep. Why do you want to do this? He should have done this with all the construction trucks are coming in. <laughs> we do everything after the fact in this town. There have been fewer complaints. Yeah. <clears throat> the, uh, we'd like to do it to... Uh... If you know. No, I think I, I best turn it to him to turn the reason over. What would you do for the end of Cahoon Road then? Turn around and uh, emergency access gate. That was supposed to be done originally, Charlie, wasn't it? I don't way, think so. Way I don't think so. Back? I don't think so. No. I think it would be wise to ask them to come in front of us and explain their motivation why they're doing this i mean I, we don't want to just approve things because they asked for it but let's find out what they're trying to accomplish and if it lines up with what we're trying to accomplish probably would make the people that live on cahoon road off right off of us it pretty happy i would think it would and it would probably make uh um the bay point Club happy not to have another uh, access access way onto their property, but I don't think the uh, necessarily the Bay Point Drive extension 
people living in those condos may agree that since they have a short cut, short cut in crowd. Right. And generally, I don't, I don't necessarily like to see access points reduced to property. I think land should be more porous as possible in terms of access and accessibility. Ken, why didn't they submit a plan to, to, to illustrate this? Because they're just searching out for opinion at this point. It's hard to make a, it's hard to express an opinion without seeing it. This is an oral description of a visual thing is, is, is hard to, they should have submitted a plan. They will if they think it's going to go somewhere. Pardon? I, I, I don't see the benefit, honestly, to this. You, you know, you're going to maybe resolve some of the complaints on Cahoon, and generate, which is a town way, and you're going to generate complaints on Bay Point Extension because while this construction's going on, they'll let me can It's Cahoon Road. You know, here, here we go again with something after the fact. Uh, being a town way, you know, here we go again. We're going we're gonna to dead end it. Basically, that's what we're going to do. Uh, essentially, it's a dead end now. There's a turnaround within the, uh, the, uh, the golf course at the end of uh, Cahoon. Yeah. But, but that would end up as a, an actual dead end then. He's going to gate it. Yeah, there'd be a real dead yeah. end. Where, where would the, on whose land would the circle be built? That would be on Bay Point Club land. So, so the circle would be built on Bay Point land. How would you make the connection into the, the condo project then? I, that's why Manuel suggested a plan to see how that would work. Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to visualize it myself. And if, if you stop at the tree line where that power line is and assume that Cahoon Road's gonna stop there and Bay Point's gonna incorporate all of the development that is the Bay Point um, condos, you're gonna be putting the cul-de-sac on somebody else. So I think he's got a point. You gotta see the plan before you can even discuss it intelligently, it seems. Uh, I guess the question is whether or not you want to have a discussion on it or suggest they uh, start again. Suggest what? Is they start over again. Is phase one complete? No, it's, no. Not, it's not complete. Half? <laughs> well, all the buildings, the buildings are up. Um, binder course is on the road. Um, sidewalks were built 90%. Uh, I haven't been in there in some time to see what extent they've done the landscaping. Um, they've done nothing with the construction of Bay Point Drive from Onset Avenue in to the clubhouse. So that's still as it always was. Um, That's the last I've seen it. I, I think it's, it's been over a month, I think, since I've been asked to go in there and look at it. So the surge of heavy equipment should be over at this point for that phase? I'd say the majority of it is because I think all the buildings are up. Pretty sure they are. For phase one, right? Yeah. 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 Phase two, all, the, all that's going to be coming in southern access point, right? Well, construction on Bay Point Drive may cause people to use Cahoon Road. Should, we should see a plan. Yeah, they should come in with a plan and describe what they want to do. And why? And you'll entertain that. And you'll entertain it and, and uh, as an option. We'll, sure. we'll listen to it, sure. sure. Okay. It doesn't have to be fancy at this point, just to... Sure. Mm -hmm. so, so we know what he's got in mind. 
Ken or, or George, for a road change to do something like this, that's a significant change. Is that a town meeting action? Yes. Yes, it requires town meeting action for a uh, change in a public road. Good. And it would take a modification of the special permit for phase one. Right? That too. That too. <laughs> in addition to a subdivision layout, maybe. Depending on what they show. So. It's a long road. <clears throat> so you're, you're, you will uh, convey convey the invite? I'll convey the invite to uh, Tim Fay. Proceed. I believe the initial not the not the first but the second stage when they did the larger condos i thought the plan was to bring that right around and come back to cahoon drive thought i saw a plan somewhere for that with the same emergency gate and all that and, that, and i don't think it was ever constructed do you recall any of that i, I wasn't involved with any of that it goes all the way around to a cul de sac and there's no emergency You see that little crescent that comes down there? I think there was supposed to be a. It was supposed to be an emergency, a breakaway yeah. gate there. It was I, never, I've been up never there. built. Yeah, it's never been constructed. Yeah, it's, it's like a bike path or a walk path, if I remember right. Yeah, I want them to put the T for this hole. This is stupid. Yeah, this is way too short. Yeah, but you lose a lot of balls in the water as well, too. Oh, this is still way too short from here. I'll extend the invitation to uh, Tim Fay. So George uh, or Ken, are you going to tell them, come on in for a talk about, you want some plans? Yeah, sounds good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll be right on that. Master plan discussion. So, Last time we talked about this, I took the action to come back um, with a proposal about how this board would review the master plan and how we would reach out to talk about the master plan to the other boards and the Congress implementation. So this is, this is pretty short. Um, on the master plan approval, um, we talked about the planning board scheduling off cycle review meetings to go through it and the update process at an open meeting. And I look, I'm looking at the 30th of September, which is next Monday, and then October 7th and 21st. 7th is a meeting. We're going to meet on the 7th and 21st because our regular meeting nights are either a holiday or town meetings. Okay. So what, let's look at a calendar then. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. There you go. Flip the page. So September 30th is an open day. And you say we're we're moving we're moving um, our planning board meetings to the seventh and twenty first. Correct. Because the fourteenth is Columbus Day and the twenty eighth is town meeting. Okay. So 
So that means that pushes us into, if we stay on Mondays, that pushes us into November. Uh, assuming we stick to 7 p.m., I think we can do this in, in two meetings, like from two two-hour meetings at the most. I, I threw three up just to, for buffer. Um, is, are we locked to Mondays? Uh, to, I don't know when when the room's available. Otherwise, or when a room is available, I can I can get a room. Doesn't have to be this one, but right. But we're going to do it under open meeting with agendas and postings and correct. And, right. So if we did the seventh of September, no, that's not right. It's September thirty. Time machine. Um. Does that work for everyone, September 30th, week from tonight? Yes. Yeah. So we're good for September 30th. Um, is there any, is That's next week. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll just start. Is, our Tuesday nights are no good for me. Thursday nights and Friday nights are. Um, Wednesday nights, I know, Ken, you're uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals, typically every other so what if I what if we said let's we did it on Thursday the 3rd October 3rd does that work for people uh, let me see a meeting this that works for me make it work going on the 7th and the 21 okay I, the one way why don't we do this let's do those two seven to nine hard to stop at nine um, let's see how far we get through it all right and so to that end the 30th of the third 30, September 30th and October 3rd. Thank you. Emmanuel, you already have a, you printed out a copy of the. Yes. So I'm not going to give you one. No, so. I, have, I have it. So this is the hard copy of the master plan, the summary. I have one. You have one? Ken, do you have one? Yes. Okay. And whoever wrote Somerville by the Sea should have been thrown out of the meeting. I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's a bad misrepresentation here. You don't show all the black bag of cars in the back of the town. <laughs> That's too far out. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> 30th and October 3rd are on. The planning board meetings on the 7th. All right, so. I just want to remind you, sorry, that the 21st of October I will not be here. Not, not, not that it matters, but. So the next step, what I'd like to do is share the current master plan online um, with all, the, all other Wareham Agency chair people and share with them our review schedule and include in the agendas that we post for these meetings, an opportunity for them to provide input if they so wish. If there are many people present, if there are many people present to participate, I'm concerned that we may not get much done. Would, how about, would you consider that the five of us, six of us, <laughs> seven of us, Charlie included, meet first to go over this plan or this, and then submit it to I, op open it up for discussion and comments. Because if we, if there were a dozen, 20 people to participate in the discussion, I, I, I think we, I'm, I'm concerned we may not get very far. 
whereas if the five of us and Ken and, and Charlie, okay, I would ask you to consider that. I, I, I'm open to any and all suggestions. Um, I understand your point perfectly. Yeah, I think at least one meeting so we all get comfortable with the yeah. direction we want to yeah. share. Yeah. That's a, a good Okay, plan. so let's do this. There will be a public meeting. It'll be posted so people want to come in and listen, they can. But sure, yeah. So, um, so, let's, so the approach I'm hearing is, is that we hold two sessions with no... Um, outside input on the agenda we do it by ourselves we get through those two let's assume that we get through the whole document at that point which I think we will um, and then we um, hold on. oh jeez <laughs> I want to share, I just, I want to share with you one slide. I don't want to redo every, all the work that Ken's already done. I'm, I'm going to get ahead of myself here a little bit. history of the current document that I just passed out. It was created by Surpad. It referenced sorry. Yeah, it was it was created by Surped. It was uh, referenced seven other documents that were already in place. There was a workshop, public workshop held in June of 17. There was social media and online surveys done in 17. There was a master plan open house on 9-14-17. Ken, I don't know your dates, Ken, but you shared this with all the agency heads already. Um, I don't know the format of that. That's what I heard you tell me. No? Yes? Yeah. Yeah. And then the final version was published. And um, the point I'm trying to make is, is I don't want to have to go through all that again. I don't think it was necessary, um, but let's, if we go through two meetings just ourselves, do we have a, do, do we then put it on the agenda for a normal meeting and have a public hearing and, and invite anybody and their brother to come talk to it? I, I think at that point we could op have an open workshop and invite other board members in to show them what we've got to the point we're at and have they additional let them critique it but have a separate meeting just with that one agenda item for their input yeah as well as public that work for everybody mm -hmm. that works for me and we'll schedule that when we're ready Congress, um, what I'd like to propose to kick this off is that the proposal that I made to this board already, that I take that and schedule it with, um, I came up with this list of five and I'm totally open to adjustments here. <laughs> Scratch the Board of Appeals, they do what they please. <laughs> Agreed? Agreed. <clears throat> now tell me, I'm learning. <laughs> And I, I mean, Conservation Committee, I, I struggled, do I include them or not? But I know that they have a lot of say in a lot of land use uh, decisions that are made in this town, so I included them. I, I would question what the Finance Committee is involved in this. I have a lot of questions about that in general. Um, <laughs> I, I hear you. Um, 
I see them up on the stage at town meeting and I, and I therefore include them. I want their endorsement. I've talked to a couple of them about it. I need them to, to get on board and, and if, we do go, if we do go to town meeting. What is, what is the goal of the Congress? What's their mission again? I'm sorry, what? What is the mission of the Congress again? The, the mission of the Congress is to get the boards to work together. With, an, with the master plan as, as the root agenda in driving activities out of that. So it's not going to be meeting with prospective developers or things of that nature? Um, as the Congress? Yeah. No, I would expect the Congress to hear people like the Redevelopment Authority come and report on activities that they're that they have undertaken and are executing against against given goals and strategies of the master plan you know in alignment with land use strategy number seven this is what we're doing over on littleton drive for affordable housing mm -hmm. and that's but that that initiative is is either the the redevelopment authorities or the planning boards or somebody's but it's not um it's not an agenda or an owner. The Congress doesn't own it. I would just say, on the example you gave, Littleton Drive, I think you'd want to have some public safety input because that's a large scale development. Yeah, I would turn to the redevelopment authority if they're driving it, which they are now, to, to do that. And I would expect you as a, as a chair, chairman of the planning board attending the Congress to ask that question of them during during an update that they gave are you have you included them in your discussions in your planning does that make sense yeah and I, I could see where finance committee would want to know some different types I don't know if they want to be included in all discussions but it, like on that particular instance you're talking that's an affordable project I assume it's that's a, one of the ways it's it's we're looking at it and their their aspect of the uh, mitigation the the impact on the community sure i know that's usually divvied up between the board of appeals and the selectmen but i think fincom should be knowledgeable about it so i heard i saw th several heads go like this when when uh, you suggested we take the zba off of this because the next bullet is is that I would do a general presentation a general audience presentation if you will of the same material in an open forum for everybody else I was just pulling your leg about Z. are you sure <laughs> you want to include them, that's if you're going to include them why not include the planning board include who you haven't they've included the planning board they've already done the presentation for us oh, yeah I considered them uh, done Okay. Um, and then finally, um, do it again at a, at a public workshop, a public hearing, or, or, or at some point when we'd gotten good input and feedback from all our agencies on what they thought it should be, <laughs> that we could take it to the public for their input. Well, all, everything you've shown is volunteer boards and commissions. Is there a point in time when the department heads are going to be dragged into this? And people that have to execute these goals? I'll be honest with you, um, I, my head wasn't there. Um, I consider the department heads to be uh, executors of plans and programs and projects that the different volunteer agencies and in the board of selectmen and finance committee and all these these agencies that we have come up with to execute against um charlie you would comment it to me once about including fire and, and police well, i think all of those people who have direct contact with the public on a daily basis uh, probably know more about the problems and, and the things that they have to solve than any of the rest of us. Mm -hmm. uh, and at some point so. in time, whatever the Congress puts forth has to be presented to the people that have to execute. Yeah. Well, of course. So we don't want to miss that handoff. 
Okay. I mean, I hear you, and, and, I, and I've given it a lot of thought, and I, and, um, I, I don't know if I went to the fire department and said, hey, I want you to go execute, you know, land use goal number 17 for me, that they they tell me that that would be something that they say is not in their purview. But if you said, okay, go back to Littleton Drive, you go in with a plan and say, this is what we're hoping to accomplish, what do you think? They can critique the plan and give you back a report. I think that in my, yeah, yeah has, that has to happen. For, in my mind, though, that's a level of execution down from what the Congress is doing. Okay. But you, I'm totally on board with you. And maybe that's the level of detail Congress ends up that we have to get to. I don't know yet. But I'm right on board. So what I'd like to walk out of here tonight with, with is this board's agreement that I will go to the ZBA, the, to the Board of Selectmen Finance Committee, Conservation Commission, and Redevelopment Authority with the Congress proposal and get their feedback and then schedule a general one for everybody else and I'll do the invites and share it with them and I'll drive it. Does that sound reasonable? After, after our meeting. The, um, the, our meeting's on master plan. This is on Congress. What, uh, not, not questioning your intent, but I don't understand. What, what would you be presenting to them? The idea that, that once a quarter, a representative from these agencies are going to get together and align themselves around the different aspects of the master plan, which is, by the way, presently in final review, if you will. And at that point, we could initiate. That's all I have for tonight. Good. I have 45 slides. I've, I've got, <laughs> I've, I've, I'm ready to go on going through on a, almost a line by line basis of, of the master plan that's in front of you on the different goals, um, the categories, goals, and strategies that are outlined in there. And there's a lot of them. The, thing I, the reason I think we can do it quickly is because a lot of them are really common sense, no-brainer type of things. Yes, we want to do those. There's not that much, um, not that many contentious ones. And even when there are, I'm not sure that we want to change them anyway because just because I don't agree with it, I guarantee you there's two people out there that do. So um, I think I mentioned to Charlie that there's, 52 different strategies outlined in the master plan. And if we could get, get five of them going, it'd be, it'd be huge. So I'm not, I'm not one to really worry a whole lot about getting all 52 of them exactly right, if you will. So, all right, I have my marching orders. Um, we good? Thanks, Richard. I, I, speaking for myself, I'm not really tuned in too much tonight after this experience. I'm not very fond of participating in any of this. Tonight I fell into a pig pen, pigsty. And the stench that I sense about myself after the vote I took makes me question what we're doing. So I apologize, I'm not tuned into what you're saying. I have to go home and take a shower, try to get the dirt off me. Well, and I think part of a, w without the ability to overcome such events in the future, we're, you know, we're paper pushers and to have our attorney, who I respect, uh, be so negative as to the way some of us see what our role is makes me question it. So I need to sleep on this side. So thank you, Richard, and I hope to be in a better mood next time we meet. <laughs> Gotta take a shower.
Yeah, I don't think anyone was happy about that. I think a lot of it was uh, presented to be expeditious rather than... Uh, I, I, and you know the problem with the problem that I'm feeling, my friends, is that I went against my principles based on what, based on the encouragement of our attorney. I betrayed my own principles, and that really bothers me. So I've got to think it through. Thanks for listening. Vote, uh, and make a motion to adjourn the meeting. You want to endorse the minutes for us? I thought we did. We do that? No, we pushed them aside. Oh, we pushed them aside. Yeah. Thanks for keeping me up. <laughs> Entertain a motion to endorse the minutes for September 9th. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Now, now, Emmanuel, you're on duty. Second. Move to adjourn the meeting. Second. Second. Michael wanted that.